ha ha. That's right. I'm officially out of videos. I posted everything I shot in Colorado, in Utah, everywhere I went this summer. I still can't travel anywhere because we're still in the middle of this construction project, but I didn't want to miss a Wednesday. So I had to come up with something I could shoot right here around the compound. And that's why this week we're going to be exploring my high school yearbook. Ugh, I'm gonna need a stiff drink for this. You're probably gonna need a stiff drink for this too. So go pour yourself whatever it is you want to drink, sit down, relax, and take a walk with me back in time to San Jose, California in 1994. Okay, you can see I went to a school called Gunderson High School, which like I said, was in San Jose, which if you don't know, is at the southern tip of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, it's kind of a technology hub now. Back then, well, I guess it was a technology hub back then too, but golly, 1994, the year I graduated, was right, right as the internet was starting to come out and right as cell phones were starting to come out. And it was also right before the first school shooting. Okay, Columbine didn't happen until 1998, I think. So in a way, I guess I was lucky to have gone to high school in the early 1990s before all of these horrible things started happening. It was a halcyon era. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I mean, I'll be honest. I wasn't exactly what you would call a spirited high schooler. I didn't like high school. I was kind of an outsider. I didn't have very many friends. And well, I guess that all kind of informs why I am the way I am today. Okay, so I was a freak and sort of a misfit. Let me show you my picture and you'll understand. Can you spot me? Yep, there I am. And the first thing you might notice is that well, my hair is kind of two different colors. Uh, you really can't make it out perfectly in this photo, but well, my sister and I had this thing in high school where we like to dye our hair all kinds of different crazy colors, you know, red, green, pink, purple. One time I used red Kool-Aid and it took forever to come out. But uh, in this particular picture, we were in a phase where we thought it would be cool to dye our hair half blonde and half black, kind of like Cruella de Vil, only I didn't really have the cojones to go whole hog. My sister did, man. She bleached half her hair almost white. But even though I didn't have super crazy hair, I did have some really crazy outfits. And in fact, well, you can see here, I was voted, well, basically it's most unforgettable. Okay, you know how they do most athletic and most likely to succeed and stuff like that? Well, I got voted most unforgettable. And you might be able to see better in this picture how I had that half black, half blonde thing going on. And you can definitely see in this picture how disgruntled I look. I told you I was a real outsider and a real freak. Anyway, you can see in this picture that I'm wearing a black leather motorcycle jacket and it looks like a black lace camisole underneath. Well, that's because biker chick was one of my many looks. My sister and I used to wear what essentially amounted to costumes to school every day. And so one of my costumes or looks was biker chick. I had these vintage Levi jeans and this old vintage Harley Davidson t-shirt from some Harley dealership back in Memphis that I got from my stepmom. And I used to wear that with the motorcycle jacket and well, pretend like I was a biker chick. And then we also had this amazing black velvet cloak with a red satin lined hood for our goth Stevie Nicks look. And then we had a punk rock look with a black lace tutu and pink combat boots. And well, I say we, because my sister and I were basically the same size in most things. So we used to wear the same outfits, uh, just not at the same time. Now, unfortunately, I don't have very many photos from this time period, so I don't have pictures of all these looks, but we also had this cowgirl costume that was kind of like a little red romper printed with old like Roy Rogers cowboys. And we'd wear a little cowgirl hat, little red felt cowgirl hat, and two cap guns on a holster. <laughs> this was before Columbine. Like I said, school shootings weren't even a thing. So believe it or not, I used to wear a cowgirl outfit with two cap guns with caps in them, I think to school and nobody said anything. Although we did have this other outfit that was supposed to be sort of like a New York artist avant-garde kind of, well, it was like a black velvet cat suit. And we would wear that with the holster and the two guns. And I did actually get in trouble for that once, but not because of the guns. It was because the cat suit was too tight 
on my booty and the vice principal told me I had to wear shorts over it. Anyway, you might also be wondering why I'm holding a copper tea kettle in this photo. Well, that's because it was my purse. <laughs> I'd like to take credit for the idea, but unfortunately, my mom told me about some punk rock girl in London that her friend used to know that did it, so it wasn't my idea, but I did. I carried this copper tea kettle around with me with all my stuff in it, and I would polish it up once a week with Brasso to keep it nice and shiny, and I carried that thing everywhere, including into at least one concert, and they didn't even take it away from me, even though that thing was totally a weapon. Anyway, that was most unforgettable. It's funny though, uh, like, the, I guess this one says, most likely to need bail money. They should have used a different color type. You can hardly read it. So I guess these were like the kids that were always getting in trouble. I wonder if they're in jail now. Oh, and here's one I was really jealous of. Uh, these were voted most artistic. And I was kind of jealous of that one for a couple reasons. One, I was and am pretty artistic, so I kind of wanted to be voted most artistic myself. But I guess you can't be greedy. I already got most unforgettable, so how am I gonna be too? Secondly, I was jealous of her because I used to have a huge crush on this guy right here. That was like one of my high school crushes. Oh my God, I hope this dude isn't watching this video. Nice Mormon kid, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, very artistic, just very nice, very smart. He's probably got three wives and a passel of kids now. Speaking of high school crushes, let me show you my other high school crush. Uh, I'm not sure he's actually in this yearbook because he was kind of a burnout. Uh, the kind of kid who would like smoke dope behind the bleachers and he probably wasn't there for picture day. No, he wasn't, but I just noticed when I flipped past that page, look, this is a big class photo of the whole class, uh, but you can see over here in the corner, there's me in my black velvet cloak with my tea kettle purse. And then next to me, that's my sis. I mean, I'll zoom in. I'm sure my sister doesn't mind me showing an old photo like this of her. I mean, look at that pouty scowl on both of us. We look absolutely miserable. <laughs> and I wasn't, I mean, to be fair, I wasn't miserable in high school. I just wasn't really the raw, raw, school-spirited type of person. Um, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Anyway, I don't see my other high school crush in this picture either. And well, of course it makes sense. He wouldn't be here with all the idiots uh, taking the picture. He's probably back there. Smoking dope in the bushes. Oh, hey, and I just realized there's another picture of me in here. Look at this. Okay, so they did this whole layout, breaking the trend. People who didn't dress like everyone else. I mean, you can see here's like the goth kids wearing their super duper awesome goth outfits. And then down here, here's the skater boys rocking their skater wear. And yes, on the right here, there, that's uh, my one high school crush. You can see why I had a crush on him. He is just absolutely adorable. Anyway, and then there's these cholos or whatever they're wearing. I guess that's supposed to be cholos. I'm not sure why their outfits are so notable, but look here, there's me. They, I got a solo all to myself. You can see my teapot is super shined up and on fleek in this picture. And then, well, you can't really tell, but I'm wearing this little like fedora with a black net veil, which I do remember, I feel like they gave me grief about wearing a hat. I mean, apparently it was okay to wear cap guns to school, but. Wearing a hat, that was just a bridge too far. Oh look, I did just notice uh, that I did get who's who in art. In this picture, you probably can't tell, but I'm wearing that black leather motorcycle jacket with a dirndl, okay? Like a traditional German dress, like in The Sound of Music. I actually still have that dirndl, I think. Uh, yeah, I had this lilac purple dirndl that I think used to belong to my mom. And that's the kind of weirdo I was. I would wear a purple dirndl with a black leather motorcycle jacket. But hey, uh, I got who's who in art and that was like, I think that was like the teacher's pick, you know, like most artistic, that was just like the popular favorite, but uh, who's who, that was, those were the people that the teacher actually picked. And we all know the teacher has better taste than the fellow students anyway. Okay, I'm trying to find a picture of this other guy that I had a crush on, but you know, he was a real outsider. When I say outsider, he had long blonde hair and he always wore like a flannel shirt over like an Iron Maiden t-shirt. And he really was pretty much smoking dope behind the bleachers, probably 99% of the time. So that pretty much explains why there probably isn't a single photo of him in this entire yearbook. That's okay, because believe it or not, he did actually reach out to me on MySpace in like, 2009, 2008, uh, and I think I even talked to him on the phone a couple times and come to find out, he had a huge crush on me all through high school. And I thought I was the one who had a huge crush on him, but I was too afraid to say anything to him. And 
well, he never said anything to me and, well, golly, can you imagine what might have happened if we had gotten together? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it would have turned out well. So anyway, uh, why was I so weird or why did I wear all these weird outfits and dye my hair all these weird colors? Why was I such an outsider? Well, I've always, I think always had an outsider mentality and I've done a lot of self psychoanalysis over the years and I think it might all stem back to the fact that when I was really little, my dad joined the military, the army, and it's a long and very interesting and very complicated story, but he joined the military, but my parents, well, he got sent to Germany, but my parents ended up basically splitting up as soon as we got to Germany. But my mom, you know, she was adventurous just like me and she decided, well, let's just stay in Germany anyways. So my mom, me and my sister, that's always in my videos with me, uh, we got a little apartment in a German neighborhood and at first my mom sent my sister and me to German kindergarten. Can you imagine? I was five and my sister was three and neither one of us spoke a single word of German. And my mom just whoosh, sent us off to German school. All the kids were German. Nobody spoke any English. We didn't speak any German. It was rough at first, but when you're that young, you can learn a language really fast. So especially with my sister, she was only three. She became fluent in German in like two weeks. But after kindergarten, we wanted to go to the American schools on the army base, okay? That's where, you know, the army base, if you're not familiar, like you go to a foreign country, there's like this walled enclave where the Americans live. And there's housing, you know, there's barracks for the single guys, and then there's housing for the families, and there's a movie theater and a bowling alley, and there's a PX and a commissary where you do your grocery shopping, and you know, a park, like all the, the schools. Well, that's where all my classmates lived on base. Well, me and my sister lived off base in this German neighborhood. So either my mom had to drive us to school and it was a really long drive. So we were late almost every single day or eventually we started taking the school bus and it was a really long bus ride. Either way, we were literal outsiders. We literally lived outside the walled enclosure where everybody else lived. And I think that that had a lot to do with why I turned out the way I turned out and why I've always felt like an outsider. And we lived like that for like eight years. I think I lived in Germany for eight years. And when we finally moved back to California when I was 12, maybe it was seven years, I don't know. Anyways, I was 12 when we moved back to California. And well, because I had been living in Germany for the past seven, eight years, I was sort of out of touch with the styles and trends that all the kids in San Jose, California were wearing. You know, I had, I had what was considered trendy and cool on the base in Germany, but that was, gosh, probably six months behind what everybody in California was wearing. So when we moved back and, you know, I went to my new school in California, oh my God, I could never get anything right. Like I always had the wrong shoes and the wrong hair and it was rough, but I kept trying to fit in. You know, I got like, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, but you know, whenever I could get something that was sort of in style for my birthday, I would try to wear that. And you know, I, I tried to fit in, I tried real hard, but then what really finally ended all of that for me once and for all was one day when I was a freshman in high school, this chick beat me up. Okay, this is a crazy story. I had gotten into this phase where, okay, I wasn't able to fit in with the trends because no matter how I tried to figure out what everybody else was wearing, like either I couldn't afford it or I just couldn't get it right. And so I thought, well, forget that. I'm just gonna go, and this is <laughs> embarrassing, but I decided I was just gonna dress really slutty. Now, remember I was 13 years old and I had this girlfriend at the time who was also 13 and we were both really, I guess we were into that TV show, Married with Children, if you ever watched that. And the teenage daughter, Kelly Bundy, played by beautiful Christina Applegate. She always had those really sexy slash slutty rocker chick outfits. Well, me and my little girlfriend, 13 year old girlfriend, we would try to wear these Kelly Bundy type outfits with like fishnet stockings and mini skirts and like leather jacket and the whole thing. And I used to walk home from school. And when I walked home every day, there was this one kid who I guess had a crush on me. And when you're 13, 14, however old he was, well, you don't just come up and tell somebody, hey, I, I have a crush on you. Would you like to go out? No, you have to act up in stupid ways. And so he would always come up behind me while I was walking home and grab my mini skirt and pull it up so you could see my panties. Whoo, imagine that. Well, it was embarrassing and I would always ah, pull my skirt back down like, ah, stop it, leave me alone. And I keep walking. Well, apparently I didn't realize this, but there was this girl who uh, had a crush on him. 
and she didn't like it one bit that he was flirting with me, pulling my skirt up all this time. So she was one of those, um, well, this was California, so there was a lot of cholos. I referenced cholos uh, a bit ago, looking at that one picture. You, a lot of you might not know what that is. So if you live in an area, especially in California, where there's a lot of Hispanic people, there, back in the 90s especially, there was a lot of Hispanic gang activity, like gangbangers. And so the dudes were called cholos, and the girls were called cholas. And they had, cholas had the most amazing style. Like they would spray their hair up huge, like 10 times as big as this, like big hair, big black eyeliner, like black lip liner, and they would wear these certain outfits. And I mean, they were hardcore. Like I heard tell that some of those big hairdos concealed razor blades that they would whip out in the middle of a fight. Okay, well the girl who had a crush on the guy who was flirting with me was one of those cholas. And so one day when I was walking home from school, she just jumped on me and beat the ever living daylights out of me. I mean, it was, Horrible. I remember I was laying there on the ground, just like, ah, 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 crying. And she was just bam, bam, bam. She was so mad that her man was pulling up my mini skirt. Oh, I need a drink just thinking about it now. And here it is like, what, 30 some odd years later? Whew, some scars never fade. Anyway, so I went home after that traumatic experience and I was like, oh my God, I'm never going back to school again. You know, I couldn't face going back to school. and. You know, part of it was I was afraid that she'd beat me up again, but part of it was I was just embarrassed and I probably had like a black eye from it all. So I remember I stayed home for probably at least a couple days. And while I was at home, I went rummaging through my mom's armoire. My mom had this really cool old antique armoire. And well, like me, my mom was and is kind of a hoarder when it comes to clothes and well, costumes, I guess. She still had a bunch of her old clothes from when she was in high school and from when she was, you know, in her early 20s in the early 1970s. So she had all these amazing vintage little 60s, 70s mini dresses and coats and <laughs> platform shoes. Look at that. These are my mom's vintage wooden platform shoes. And I started wearing these to school. When I came back after this traumatic beatdown, I just decided, okay, you know what? I tried fitting in, I tried dressing slutty, none of that worked, I'm just gonna get weird. So I started wearing these little 60s mini dresses and these giant platform shoes. I mean, golly, one time I did, I remember I fell over in the hallway and like almost broke my ankle. I don't know how those of you who actually lived in these times wore these things, I mean. <laughs> Talk about a disaster waiting to happen. But yeah, I just uh, raided my mom's closet. She had this really cool gunny sacks peasant dress. I used to wear that on occasion. And then, uh, weirdest of all, she had a gunny sacks wedding gown, okay? I don't have a big enough shot to shave it. This is a full length gunny sacks. If you remember gunny sacks, ladies from the 70s, I guess. Gunny sacks prairie style wedding dress. I used to wear this to high school. And that was when I had like different colors in my hair and I was carrying this copper tea kettle. I mean, you tell me, would you have talked to me? Okay, speaking of that girl who beat me up, let me see if I can find a picture of her in here. I don't think her picture is in this yearbook because, well, she was a bad girl. And you can see, looking at some of these hairdos, this is like, this is what they did. Look at that, isn't that wild? I mean, people tell me I have big hair today. They should have seen some of these other girls. Okay, I guess that girl who beat me up isn't in the yearbook, but there's probably plenty of other people in here who were really mean to me. And yes, I'm petty enough to show them live on YouTube. I'm gonna tell you exactly who was mean to me. There's this one guy in particular who was a huge dick to me. And I don't know the legality of this, of talking about somebody on YouTube, so. Uh, I was gonna point him out to you, but to be honest, I think they got the name wrong next to his picture because I looked up his name and that's not him. Anyway, there was this dude named Steve who was a giant asshole to me. I mean, he was just really mean. Like I said, we didn't have a ton of money growing up and well, I won't get into it here, but he was just very nasty and I haven't forgotten. And I bet a lot of you watching this video have similar experiences. Like, don't we all remember like, you know, who was the jerk and who was the beautiful popular girl. And you know, we all wonder what happened to them. And unfortunately I haven't gone to any of my uh, high school reunions. So I don't know what happened to any of these people. I mean, I'm Facebook friends with a couple of them, which it blows me away because I wasn't real friends with them at all in real life. The only person in this whole damn yearbook I still really talk to and consider a friend and ever considered a friend is my sister. 
But there were a few people who were nice to me and who were cool. Um, let me see if I can pick any of those. Oh, she was cool. Oh, she was nice to me. This poor dude right here was pretty nice to me. Nicer than I deserve. Matter of fact, anyone who was mean to me, uh, I totally deserve because there was this one chick that everybody used to make fun of. And you know how it is when there's another kid that everybody's teasing and making fun of and you're already self-conscious about your own social position and so you join in making fun of that person. Well, there was this one girl that everybody used to pick on and because I was frankly so relieved that they weren't picking on me for three seconds that, well, I'm ashamed to this day, 30 odd years later to say that I joined in picking on this poor chick. Let me see if I can find her. The worst thing that happened is, uh, you know how they vote for homecoming queen? Well, they had all the homecoming queen nominees. We had some stupid rally. Everybody had to go in the gym and they go, okay, here's all the nominees. And you know, they all had to go up and you had to cheer for who you wanted to be the homecoming queen. And this one girl, I guess somebody nominated her as a joke because everybody always made fun of her. And so when she went up there, everybody was boo -ha, laughing at her. And oh my God, I'm so ashamed to say that I, I'm pretty sure I joined in booing and laughing at her, but I'll never forget to this day. She held her head high when she walked to the front of the little podium. And even though she knew everybody was laughing at her, you know, she had her little group of friends that were cheering for her and she friggin' took it like a champ. So I really wonder what happened to that chick. I'm gonna show you her picture. I'm not gonna tell you her name. That's her right there. All I'm gonna say is her name was Katie. And Katie, if you happen to be by some weird chance watching this video, I'm super sorry for being such a jerk to you. Okay, well, there's one more thing I wanna talk about when it comes to this yearbook. And that is, you can see it's called Leaving Our Mark. And then there's a paw print there in the sand. That's because we were the Gunderson Grizzlies. So I guess that's supposed to be the mark we left as we walked through the sands of time, uh, AKA the halls of high school. But this title is especially funny and appropriate when you consider the tale I'm about to tell. Okay, this is a good one. So <laughs> get your drinks. <laughs> okay, so when I was a senior, well, when you're a senior in high school, it's time to start thinking about what you're gonna do when you graduate. And well, I never knew what I wanted to do, but you know, I was smart and I had okay grades and I had good SAT scores. So, well, it was sort of presumed that I would go to college, but we didn't have a lot of money as previously discussed. And basically if I wanted to go to college, I was gonna have to get some scholarships. And in order to qualify for a scholarship, well, you gotta do extracurricular activities. And like I said earlier, I wasn't exactly the type to go in for extracurricular activities. I mean, what am I gonna do? Join the chess club? <laughs> but you know, when you do these college applications or scholarship applications, they wanna see that you did this and you did that and you were involved and blah, 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 blah. So I thought, oh brother, what can I do that will involve the least amount of effort and social interaction? Well, my sister happened to be taking French and they had a French club that met once a week. And even though I never took French in my life, I started going to the French club meetings with her just so I could put that on my uh, scholarship applications. So honestly, in this French club, we didn't really do much. Like I think we, well, actually, I think there's a picture in the yearbook. In fact, I know there is, I just saw it. Oh, here it is, French club. Okay, yeah, there's the Eiffel Tower in case you couldn't tell. So we did do, uh, oh look, there's me. <laughs> There's me and my sis, oh my God. Looking very somber as always. There's, you can't even tell because the picture's kind of blurry, but I'm wearing a beret. Anyway, you might uh, see that there's a block of text here in the middle of the page that, well, it kind of talks about what we did as a French club, but you may notice that there are some lines of blacked out text. And that's because huh, uh, baby did a bad thing. I got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> over this. In fact, oh, my poor long suffering mom. I used to get in trouble almost every year in school, starting from about, oh God, the earliest instance I remember was third grade. In third grade, third grade back in Germany at Mark Twain Elementary School, I actually looked up all the bad words in the dictionary. You know, like certain bad words are in the dictionary, like ass, bitch, you know, whatever. Well, I looked up all those words and I made a handy cheat sheet for the kid who doesn't have time to look up all the words on his own, I wrote, you know, I looked up the page number and I just wrote page 36, page 72, like whatever the words were and what page number their definitions were on. So that way, you know, the bad kid on the go could just have like a handy reference cheat sheet to the definitions of all his favorite bad words without having to go through the trouble of actually looking them up. And I sold the cheat sheet for 25 cents. 
And this one poor girl was actually dumb enough to buy it from me. And then her mom found it when she got home and her mom was like, what is this? You spent 25 cents on, I'm calling this principal. Well, next thing you know, my poor mom, I think she had to go in and they talked to her about me and God, it happened almost every year. Like I drew dirty pictures one year. I had a dirty slam book one year. I was truant one year. I mean, every year it was something with me. Huh. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Anyway, I saved the biggest trouble for my senior year so I could go out with a bang, my piece de resistance, <laughs> the worst trouble I ever got in. Uh, at the beginning of the year of my senior year, I guess the yearbook staff, you know, was putting things together, like trying to figure out what they're gonna do in the yearbook and planning things out. And the guy who was the yearbook staff advisor was also the photography teacher. And I was taking photography because, well, Shouldn't it be obvious by now? <laughs> anyway, I was taking photography and the teacher was such a nice man. Really, a, a really nice, I'm pretty sure he was gay, gay man. And he was so nice. He came to me and he goes, hey, uh, Sarah, you're in the French club, right? Oh, uh, oui, oui, monsieur. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the French club. What can I do for you? Well, we need somebody to write a blurb about the French club in the yearbook. Cause you know, you're flipping through these pages and they talk about the chess club. Here's what we did this year. You know, the Latin club. Here's what we did this year. Well, they needed something like that for the French club. So I go, oh yeah, sure. I'll write something for you. <laughs> and I was already formulating an evil plan. My sister who was taking French had just gotten a book somebody gave her that was, it was called Merde. M-E-R-D-E, -E, which if you know anything about French is a very bad word in French. It means shit. Anyway, this book was basically a guide to French cuss words. And it wasn't just your basics. I mean, it went into some very exotic swear words and curses that you could call people. And I mean, it was kind of a funny book. It was marketed to Americans that were learning French and just it taught you how to say all kinds of mean and horrible things in French. And I think I happened to have the book with me. So I go, oh yeah, sure. I'll write a blurb about the French club. So I wrote, you know, bonjour, we are the French club. This year we, you know, sold croissants to raise money so we could go to this French restaurant and we did this and we did that. And then at the end of the paragraph, I just blasted all this horrible, horrible, horrible French obscenities. And the only thing I feel bad about today, well, A, that my poor mom got dragged into it and B, you know, some of the slurs that I wrote were homophobic and I felt really bad about that because like I mentioned, I think the yearbook instructor was gay, but back then, I mean, it's not even that long ago, but even in 1994, you know, he probably felt like he had to stay closeted. I don't know. I just feel really bad because, well, you'll find out what happened. Anyway, so I wrote this whole blurb and there was all this, whole, I mean, when I say obscene, it was like this book had some really exotic things in it and I just threw them all in there. But the, friend, the, the yearbook advisor, the photography teacher, he didn't know, he didn't speak French. So I gave him the little write-up when I was done. I go, here you go, you know, put that in the yearbook. He goes, oh, great, thank you. You know, he just saw it said blah, 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 blah in French. He thought it was okay. Well, it wasn't okay and it wasn't okay at all. But, you know, the year went on. I forgot all about it. You know, had all my share of ups and downs and highs and lows like all high school people have. And then finally, the end of the year rolled around. Now it was June, 1994, and there were two big developments. One, OJ Simpson just killed his wife or well, was accused of killing his wife. And two, they were gonna hand out the yearbooks. Yes, that's right. It was the final week of the year and uh, they made an announcement. You know how in school they do those announcements every morning on the intercom? You know, good morning class. Today is June 10th, 1994. And today's the day we're gonna hand out the yearbooks. Huh. Or I think they announced that they were gonna hand out the yearbooks on Friday. They gave a few days notice. So I heard that and I went, oh, I totally forgot. And I think I was in, like a government class or something. I turned to my friend who was sitting behind me. I was like, hey, I totally forgot about this. But at the beginning of the year, when they asked me to write this blurb for the French club, I wrote all these horrible cuss words and obscenities. <laughs> well, guess what happened? There was this other dude sitting next to me who overheard me and he was on the yearbook staff. A, B, he was also a huge nerd. And again, this was one of those revenge of the nerds things uh, because he was also somebody that I probably made fun of uh, for a reason that was no fault of his own. I mean, he was one of those guys that just kind of developed breasts when he was going through puberty. Some guys do, you know, they were just fat boobs. They weren't real boobs and they were bigger than my boobs ever grew to be. So I was probably motivated at least in part by jealousy. 
But I used to join him with everybody else calling him boobs and making fun of him. Well, he got his revenge on me in a big way because he overheard me talking about what I had put in that yearbook. And oh my God, he went straight to the yearbook advisor, that nice closeted gay guy. And told him, like, hey, stop the presses. We can't pass out this yearbook. There's all these obscenities in it. And you know how people are. They're so litigious nowadays that if those yearbooks had been passed out as is, then some kid's parent who spoke French would have looked at it and been like, oh, my goodness. How dare this high school publish something like this? I want my money back. Blah, blah, blah. It would have turned out to be a huge mess. Now, in retrospect, I suppose I could have just played dumb and said, Oh my God, I didn't write that. I don't know what happened. Somebody at the printer must have a sick sense of humor. But I'm very honest. I've always been very honest. So when the friggin' yearbook advisor called me in, oh God, I was so embarrassed, but I, I was honest. I said, yes, I did. Oh, I'm really sorry. Uh, well, oh my God, it was ugly, man. Now I had to go see the principal. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, he called me in and he was very stern. I mean, at first, he, you know, he was like, this is really serious. We This was a big high school too. I don't know how big the student body was, but probably like 1,200 kids. So there was a lot of yearbooks, maybe even more. Uh, there was a lot of yearbooks. So it was a lot of money, you know, like to, there's no way you can send them all back and have them reprinted. Like he had to figure out something to do. So at first, I mean, he really put the fear of God into me. He was like, you know, he was going to make my mom pay for, it was like a thousand dollars or something to pay for that page in the yearbook. I'm not sure what the thousand dollars would have bought, but I know my mom, as previously discussed, was really hardworking and didn't have an extra thousand dollars to piss away on something like that. So, oh my God, when he said that, I was like, oh my God, no, yikes. Is there, is there anything else I can do? Well, he, I think he was bluffing because the thousand dollars wouldn't have been able to do anything anyways. So what he ended up coming up with as my penance for being such a bad, bad girl, uh, I had to go through every single one of these yearbooks with a big black Sharpie and black out the offending words. And so that's why you see these lines of marker. I think I opened up saying something like, bonjour, you mother f***ers. And then I ended it with just some random stream of really horrible, obscene cuss words. Uh, you can actually kind of make it out even now through the layers of Sharpie. Over the years, it looks like it's faded somewhat. You might be able to make out it says, basé en levrette, which I don't even know if that's correct, but it was in this friggin' book that my sister had and it meant something like, like a greyhound Anyway, it was super embarrassing and it was also super tedious to have to go through I mean, I don't know how many yearbooks there were, probably almost a thousand with a marker of blackout every single one of them. And remember, this was at the end of the school year, so we didn't have a lot of time. It's not like I could just go in and do like, you know, 50 books a day. No, we had to get them all done pronto. Thankfully, my poor, long suffering sister with whom even now I'm sharing this Death Valley compound with, she came in with me, another friend of mine came in after school and I think we had to go in two or three days after school and sit there for a couple hours just in the principal's office, blacking out yearbooks. And then because the marker lines kind of look tacky, well, the principal also had these stickers printed up that had like a nice blurb about the French club that you could stick the sticker right over the text. Uh, and then that way you didn't have to notice that there was a black marker. Now, obviously I didn't put the sticker over mine because I wanted to remember what happened. You know, I don't, I'm not a fan of erasing history, you know, good or bad, I don't like this current trend that we're in towards like pretending bad things never happened. No, even if, when it was my own stupid, embarrassing mistake, by golly, I wanna remember that I did it. But I did put the sticker in here, right here, look at that. <laughs> we are the French Club, a group of strange and wonderful wankers. I guess he allowed that to fly, that's interesting. With an interest in France, especially the food. Club activities this year included selling delicious croissants at lunch, seeing a French film, and going out to a French restaurant for dinner. Sound like fun? We hope to gain a better understanding of the French culture. Boy, that is funny that he let wankers fly. I mean, maybe that was like his concession to me. You know, now that I think about it, maybe the yearbook advisor actually thought I was funny for doing it. Because now that I'm thinking about it, the only uh, homophobic slur that I put in that thing was pederast, which is a pederast, like a, uh, you know, uh, pedophile. Uh, but I guess it sort of means a gay pedophile. So it wasn't like super homophobic, but I still feel bad about it. Anyway, you can see I did not put the sticker where it was meant to go over the French club blurb with the markers. No, I put it right over the face 
of the friggin' principal. That's right. You can't see his face because I done covered it with a big old sticker. But anywho, all of that is why I think the name of this yearbook, Leaving Our Mark, is so funny. Because by golly, I did leave my mark on every single one of these dang yearbooks. How about that? <laughs> so if there's anybody from Gunderson High School, class of 1994 or even 93, or I guess 95, 96, 97, the other underclassmen watching this video, well, I guess, I was gonna say I apologize, but I don't, you know? I mean, I feel bad for my mom having to get dragged into it again, but hey, the good news about all of that is that that was the last time I mean, I was, after that, I, was a, I wasn't a minor anymore and they couldn't call my mom in when I got in trouble, you know? And I got, trust me, I've gotten in plenty of trouble since then. Like, I got a DUI one time and had to go to jail. I'll tell you all about that another time. Well, I didn't, they didn't call my mom for that. So, mom, you're finally off the hook. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little stroll down memory lane back in time to San Jose, California, circa 1994. Now, I'm going to put on my Stevie Nicks cape and go flouncing around the desert, howling at the full moon, cursing that principal who made me black out all those yearbooks. <laughs> See you in hell!